up my body and you think I'm sexy. I don't. Oh, I want to let me know. Gross. Saw him. He looks great. You don't. <laughs> Back to our stupid reaction videos. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. It's so juicy. Thanks for having us on official Twitter account. Follow us on official 2.0 channel as well. Yep. There's good stuff over there. Little cuties. And today uh, we got a little special video, a uh, little informational video. Yeah. This is called "Why There Aren't More Six in the U.S. Military." Wow, what an interesting topic to this cover. This was sent to me by a, a sick. Correct, that's what they're... Yeah, sick. Six. Yeah, we had we had mistakenly said seek. Well, that's what how we're known. Because that's how we knew it. Okay, here. somebody told me that they it's seek in America to make sure they're not getting confused with the word sick. Gotcha. So I think that's gotcha. what they said. But yeah, I think they, the they call themselves sick. sick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this is a little informational video uh, about... A little information. Last time I wore the shirt... Uh huh. Ustad Jizakir Hussein pointed out, you got a new shirt? Yep. You want, you want to touch that? This is the shirt I was wearing when we were with him. You only have two shirts. That's true. Here we go! Since 1775, the military has broadly protected the religious liberty of its troops. Well, but in 1981... This is American military. U.S. military. Got it. The military broke from that tradition when it passed a ban on all beards. The result? the near total exclusion of the world's fifth largest religion, Sikhism. I didn't even think about that. In the early days of the Sikh religion in South Asia, Sikhs suffered severe religious persecution. Defending themselves and their neighbors became a core part of their identity. Since then, Sikhs have populated armies worldwide and earned a reputation among the world's best, best warriors. warriors. Yeah, I've had this fascination with uh, with a soldier's life ever since I was a little kid. You know, hearing stories about my great grandfather serving in World War One. This is Captain Simmer Paul Singh. He goes by Simmer. Growing up, he was an all-American high school student, just with a beard and a turban. I always had, you know, long hair, never never cut my hair, and I had a pretty awesome beard by my senior year of high school. <laughs> For Sikhs, unshorn hair, turbans, and beards symbolize the core principles of their faith, such as equality, justice, and uh, selfless service. After high school, Simmer was endorsed by his local congressman and accepted into West Point. Sweet. On his first day, he wore his beard and turban, thinking he would get an accommodation. He was wrong. Before he knew it, he was faced with the choice, cut his beard or go home. And basically, I went inside the barbershop. You know, I had never been inside a barbershop. Mm. Sat down. Oh, man. I don't think the lady knew. Right? Oh. Like, she didn't know the significance. She didn't know that my entire life was, was being changed, right? Like, and everything that I've been taught was just being shattered, oh. you know, in, in five minutes. I think the way I made that decision, the way I justified it in my mind, was that I'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way, right? I'll, I'll figure out a way to come back. That was a promise that I made to myself. There are more guys like Simmer out there, and a handful of them have received accommodations for their beards and turbans. And their success in the military has disproven the necessity to exclude others That's like right. them. Chaplain Goldstein is the longest serving Jewish chaplain in the armed forces. I have been in some pretty tough places with a beard, my helmet, and the mission was never degraded or challenged or threatened. Major Kamal Khalsi was also accommodated after petitions from the Sikh community. His medical background during a shortage of military doctors tipped the scales in his favor. I can tell you with 100% assurance that none of my fellow soldiers or patients could care less that I was wearing a turban or a beard while I was treating their wounds. The Pentagon has claimed that a bearded soldier cannot probably wear Yeah, that's wear exactly what I was going to say. But its own soldiers, including Kelsey, Goldstein, yeah. those who wear beards for medical reasons, and even the special forces who wear beards for tactical advantage. That's what I was going to just talk about SEALs. Disproven the Pentagon's claim. I was going to talk about and the they SEALs. they passed those combat readiness training exercises, it was, it was validated that their, the fact that they look a little different and their appearance does not impact their combat readiness on the battlefield. Yet, the policy remained. So this is this picture is of my entire platoon in Afghanistan. Uh, I'm in the middle. Simmer served for 10 years, was trained as an army ranger, Dang. and received a Bronze Star Medal for his service. Dang. When he learned about Thank soldiers like Major Kalsi and Chaplain Goldstein, he requested an accommodation of his own. 
Soldiers that we were with together from 562 overwhelmingly have been in support of what he's doing, which I think is a huge testament to his leadership and his character and, and how much he strives to be an asset to the Army. But the Army stalled for six months and tried subjecting him to discriminatory testing that far exceeded the requirements for other soldiers. So in 2016, the Beckett Fund, the Sea Coalition, and McDermott, Will and Emery helped Simmer sue the United States military. Simmer's secret weapon was the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, or RIFRA which requires federal entities, including the military, to accommodate beliefs absent of compelling government interests. We are American. Without laws like RIFRA on the books that protect religious liberty, it's very difficult to bring these claims forward. It's really difficult to advocate for people's individual rights. And that has also made a very big difference in our ongoing discussions with the military. In 2016, a court ruled that the Army's treatment of Captain Singh was discriminatory and told the Army to reconsider its regulations. The Army ultimately agreed, and in early 2017, they formally revised the 30-year-old ban to let Sikh serve. I realized that I didn't have to live in two worlds, right? I would go home and put on my turban when I was on leave, and then I'd come to work and not be wearing a turban, so that I didn't have to live that life anymore. I can be one the person. Soldier. My hope is that uh, you know, no 18-year-old kid has to make the miserable decisions that I had to make to choose between their faith uh, and their country. Mm. And that you know, uh, parents can mm. tell their young kids that hey, you can be anything that you want in the United States, and that includes military service, and still practice your faith uh, fully. Sir, if you are watching, or somebody please find him, I want to talk to you. I want you to come on the channel. Because that was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. You are you are a legit you, hero. You are a legit, legit hero, hero. Soldier. So like you are selfless to the point of d doing something that I would think is un unthinkable. I can't imagine. Like that hurt my I heart. I can't imagine the pain. Yeah. He felt. For, it makes me emotional for him to have to cut that. His family. My goodness. Like. <sighs> so it just gets me emotional, and I. I understand, here's, this is one of the things I was gonna point out. The first thing that came to my mind, and I didn't wanna talk over the video, and I was hoping they'd get to it, and they did. The yeah. first thing I was thinking about was gas masks. Yeah. And the seal that happens on a gas mask. But then I also was understanding, and this is true, especially in basic, one of the most critical things of military training is the eradication of individuality. Because if you maintain individuality, you become a detriment to the core of the whole. It's one of the key elements of every facet of military training whether it's SEAL training, which is the upper echelons, or you're just becoming a basic recruit in any of the branches of the military. The reason they shave your head and make you all look the same is because they want to crucify your sense of individuality. That I understand. I also understand that somebody can still serve and be committed to the core without having to have their identity destroyed. There's a difference between eradicating the idea of self versus crushing somebody's core identity. And this guy, as a Sikh, already understands the principles. The very things he wears are the very essences of what are the core attributes of the military. Selfless service, respect, uh, and, uh. And, and here's the contradiction. <clears throat> after basic, after BUDS training, most Navy SEALs have beards, man. Virtually every Navy SEAL you see, the minute but it's like a standard thing for a SEAL to have a beard. Yeah, yeah I, have, <laughs> I have absolutely nothing but respect for all military. It doesn't mean I have respect for the government as a whole. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's, they're completely separate. You can, very you separate. Can be very proud of the people in the military and also despise who is in charge of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, and you're no less of a, a patriot. Uh, but, no. uh, that's one of the, there's a lot of issues with the, not the military members, but the military organization yeah. as a whole. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times they're stuck in their ways. Right. When like they, they're like, okay, I, I, like I, you said, I know that the whole thing is for breaking you down. That's cool. But once again, this is America. You have the, you can't, it's just like they don't make women shave their heads. Right. <laughs> Even though they, they make men shave their heads. Right. They don't make women shave their heads yeah. because that's part of their identity. So, like, it, this is America, so you have religious freedom. Right. People work 
everywhere in this country and throughout the world with looking different. Yeah. So you can make exceptions. Right. I, I get why you're doing it. I'm not saying you need to change it. But for people that it's the core of their religion and their identity, you like I'm I'm so glad. I mean, I hate that you had to do it from talking to this man. I hate that you had to do it, but I'm 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 glad you stuck out for the other people so they don't have to go through what you had to go through. Yeah, his his sacrifice selfless, which is why I'm saying he's a true soldier. He really is, because again, if you are seeing this, sir, you're well, love to talk to you. You're doing what the majority of people would understandably say, I will never do that, put you in a position where you could change it, like you said at the end, where no one else would ever have to do that. And sadly, that's typically what it takes to see some dramatic change in a culture where people have been locked in their ways for no other reason than this is just the way that we've always done it. Like, I love that one gentleman who said studies were done and showed this makes no difference. And it really doesn't. I understand it at the outset of training, yeah. but the ultimate end result of what you produce and the quality of a soldier, it had nothing to do with any of that. I, I, nothing to do I with any of that. I get why they do it. I think they could not do it and it would 100%. still have the same effect. You could break people down without, like, no, like because you could it's literally the same, break people down. It's very much the same reason as to why the, the military wasn't allowing women to serve in the military. Yeah. There were all the things behind it about why they said you can't do that, there's too many this, there's too many that, and they realized once they let women in, oh, we were wrong. That's not an issue. And again, this too. It may be an issue in basic at the very beginning, but I think the long-term goal, why in the world would you turn away a sick mm -hmm. from being one of your soldiers, man? And it shows right there. Though. Why the heck would you do that? That's like turning away yes. a seven foot tall, really coordinated guy that can shoot threes and slam and post and say, well, because you wear your hair this way, we're not letting you play in the NBA. Yeah, and it, it, the military is a bunch of stuff because, because of that exact thing about they want everybody to look the same. Uniform. They don't let people, like I couldn't get in some branches of the military if I wanted to because I have tattoos. Right. Some, not all. Now, I understand if you don't pass the physical exams. Oh, yeah. That, that makes sense. Some some branches still, if you have tattoos that are visible, you are Because it's identifying. Yeah. You are not allowed in. Like I said, it's... I think it's a dated thing. It is. But, whatever. I get why they're trying to do it. I don't agree with it. And I agree, because here's the deal. Based on what I know about basic training, especially BUDS training, mm -hmm. whatever you think you can't get out of the person in terms of crushing their identity... That's not the core issue. The core issue is, are you going to give up yeah. when you think you're going to die? Trust me, when you're in hell week in Bud's training, mm -hmm. the thought of your identity is the last thing on your mind. What you're thinking at that point is, will I die or lose my mind? <laughs> and you want to know if someone can push through that. Yeah. And if they can, sense of identity isn't an issue. And, <laughs> and the sex? Are, any well, any more than you've got an Italian, an Irishman, and a Jew, and they're all together in the military. I promise you in buds, none of them are thinking about that. No. <laughs> well, once again, yeah. I'm glad it changed. 2017 is way too Way late too long. For late. Yeah. But I didn't even know this was an issue because I didn't think about the six in the U.S. military. It, it, for some reason, well, it just never came to my mind, but yeah, it's, 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 that's an issue. It is, and here's the thing that's important, is that that it changed, it needs to stay this way, because yeah. as you know, you can put elected officials in who can then change laws and reverse things that have been done in the military. Yeah. Where once certain people were allowed to serve, and then new administrations come in, and new people are put into office, and they say, no, nope, we're going to go back to the way it was. So, it could happen again and go back to that. But that so was great. Hopefully not. Uh, that was great. Any more information? Because I'd love to actually learn more about the sick people. Uh, the sick. I'm, I want to make sure I'm saying it. Correctly. Yeah, the sick. Sick people. Yep. Uh, as, as a whole, because we, we were still learning. But I like just that made me so upset when he had to. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the cutting and shaving of his. I, I just I can't imagine yeah. what that was like for him. No, it was awful. Yeah, we salute you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your Sincerely, service. And thank you all to the. Six throughout the world yeah. who are serving it's in the military. A beautiful combination of well, we salute you and Jai Hind at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah.